All right, in five, four, three, two, one. How's it going, everyone? This is Frank Cavone, the Chief Flights of Cornbread Podcast. How's it going, everyone? I'm Frank Cavone. I'm here with my co-host, Brett Porter, for the first episode of the Chief Flights and Cornbread Podcast on location at Putnam Place. How's it feel that finally have a home and not be on the streets, on the North Way? Dude, I feel like uh, I feel like I lost my cardboard box somewhere along the way. This is a lot swankier. I hit my head off of a... Uh, it's not in frame, but to those of you who have never been to the Putnam Place, especially in the back, like where we're at, uh, there's these giant light bulbs that are kind of uh, half light, half uh, like aesthetic design. Half bulb. Half bulb, full hurt when you uh, <laughs> when you bash your head off them uh, trying to set up for a podcast. But aside from that, I really like it here. It's, uh, it's, it's nice. really nice. There's uh, off camera. There's some really nice granite countertop, teeny tiny uh, circular tables that are currently holding our audio recording equipment. Yes. One day, maybe we'll give you guys the whole tour of everything, but right now we're still kind of settling in. We still have a, a lot to unpack. We do, and we wanted to say a big thank you to Sly Fox and just the Putnam Place for even allowing us to do this. We've been uh, spending some time trying to figure out how we're going to continue our podcast and how we're going to make sure we hold ourselves accountable each and every single week. And the thing that we found the hardest was that it's not easy when you don't have a home base. And when we were doing the Kind of Live, Kind of Living podcast, we had a home base. We had Doug's house. And um, But since we kind of become adults in the past few years, uh, it Something seems like, like uh, we don't want to bring our work home either, too. So, you know, we originally were thinking, hey, let's get the Mirth Films office. You know, let's, let's, let's expand in that sense. And then we're like, you know what? Let's go and try to see if one of these venues around our area would be cool with us doing something like this. And we have, this isn't our first time on the Chief Lights and Hardware podcast being here. We were on stage at one point. Um, but we have uh, decided that this is the place where we want to spend our time. It's halfway in between you and I somewhat. And um, and I spend so much time here anyway. So it's like, why not? You know, it's just, it's a, it, again, thank you, Sly Fox. This is going to be so much fun each and every single week. We will be doing a podcast from here, even if uh, the podcast day falls on Christmas or, or Kwanzaa or God forbid Easter. You don't want it to fall on Easter, but I can bet your ass that you'll be, you'll find us here in the booth. We will. A very however. comfy one at that. Too. Yes, yes. We've upgraded chairs. I was sitting on a uh, stool prior to this. Okay. This little metal bongo. What honestly, was it? What is a? How do you define a stool versus a stool? So a stool, so this thing that I would sit on during the podcast usually when we're doing them was really just to put like a flower base on or something like that. And oh. I was like, I was like, I don't care what you call that. That's a stool with quotation marks. <laughs> and also it's two in one. If you really want to get down, you're feeling some vibes. Uh, you're rocking out to John Mayer Trio. It's also a metal bongo too. And I think you you were sitting in a fucking lawn chair Dude, yeah. inside my house. Yeah. We would shift around everything every single week. Oh, and yeah. I'll tell you, it was the most annoying process. And it's my biggest gripe about doing things live is, aside from the quality, was how many wires were on the ground. I mean, goddamn. It's For a one lot. hour it's a of a podcast, field. it's what, like two and a half hours of setup, half hour of pre-planning. Yeah. I mean... God forbid, we need some inspiration and we need to figure out the trivia question for that week. We need some spirits oh, wow. over at the Bombers. Yeah, seriously. While we have a... no Bombers, we do have Black Coffee. This is uh, our first sponsor of the episode, uh, Black <laughs> Coffee, brought to you by Troy, New York. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there actually a company called Black Coffee or are you just happening to be drinking Black Coffee? I'm just, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm really trying to lobby for no cream and sugar at uh, coffee shops. I think it's uh, disgusting. And I think it's bad for your health. And why would you want to cut down how much energy you can put in your body? You can just drink it straight black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember many, many years ago. So well before I was uh, seeing and now engaged to my woman. So, uh, babe, if you hear this at home and this finally comes out, this was a while ago. I had matched with a woman on Tinder. And we had hung out. And it was like 3 in the morning. I was like, hey... This is in Plattsburgh. I'm like, hey, I know a place. It was like the gas station. 
because I drink black coffee. I very rarely, very rarely do I use creamer. It's only if the coffee is so fucking hot that I need something to cool it down right then and there. So I ended up getting like this giant, probably like 26 ounce cup of black coffee. And let me tell you, this woman looked at me like I had just created an assembly line of puppies that were getting ready to be drowned. And that's the sad thing. It's like, you know, if people only knew. I always looked at it as like, I don't know, maybe like, you know, people who go to AA drink hot black coffee, maybe because it's, I don't know, I like the bite to it. I like the fact that, yeah. like, I feel like I'm putting some in my body that's not like candy or, or sugar, you know, yeah. and like, and that's where, yeah, I mean, just wake up. I mean, our world's in trouble, and I think the answer is black coffee and more of it. Um, so, we usually start off our episodes with how our week has been, but I think we're going to try to move that towards the end because we both tend to ramble. And I want to just do a couple plugs here before we get going here. Number one, mirth-films.com. It's, it's where our home base is online. You can find everything that we do there from the podcast, original video content. Um, you can find the interviews that we've been doing. I want to give a big shout out to everybody who has uh, done interviews with Mirth Films in the past few weeks. I feel like I've done like 10 interviews. I did seven interviews yesterday. Isn't that crazy? Why? Because I really think that I didn't push myself in the smartest way this last year, where it's like really trying to, like behind the scenes, like try to strategize this company, this time, this effort we put in, five years of effort. Like, I mean, we're hitting 30 now. And to me, it's working smarter, not harder in the sense of like, I'll still work my ass off, but you know, how am I going to devote my time? Is this channel going to help this thing that we love and, you know, Sure, bond over and uh, so we've had a few interviews. First off, thank you, Morgan, uh, Morgan, Morgan Fairchild, uh, for doing uh, the interview on Monday. It's a great interview. Please go check it out on the website. Also, we've been out and about uh, doing some camera related content. Uh, Vinny Otto and I both went over to Shelving Rock Falls earlier last week to capture waterfall, waterfall photography, and um, it's just something that I really have wanted to do for a long time is make a camera related uh, video each and every single week, whether I'm reviewing gear or I'm reviewing, um, or I'm just trying to teach you something or just, I want to go have fun aside from music because that's important. Um, so that's why I started it. I don't want to get burnt out doing the thing I love, which is going and shooting concerts and drinking bush. And uh, so some things had to change and that was uh, something that I really wanted to get up and going. We have our third video dropping this upcoming week. And once you get past the third one, that's when you know it's a series, you know? That's when you know, that's when Mirth Minute became a thing. It's like, okay, can we hold ourselves accountable? Now that, again, hey. And it's know, coming back. And it's, it's coming, coming back. back. You're here first next week. Mirth Minute. Mirth Minute. Super fan Davey, just be aware. It's coming back, man. <laughs> and then also, Listen Up Awards, March 26th at Cahoes Music Hall. Uh, your vote, your choice. Uh, by the time you listen to this, the nomination process has ended. Um, so next episode, we will be doc talking a little bit about some of the people who were nominated and uh, just about the voting process because that's in you're included in that as well. March 26th, Cahoes Music Hall, 3 p.m., uh, it is the most fair music uh, award ceremony that we have here, and it's all for you guys, and all for the name of fun. Um, and other than that, I nerded out a little bit this week. We did a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater uh, ranking uh, best to worst on our website. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I actually started emulating again and uh, was playing some THPS 3, and that was oh a blast. Um, so... Aside from that housekeeping. I was, I was a Pro Skater 4 kind of cat myself back in the day. I, so I love Pro Skater 4. Pro Skater 4 is amazing because it's open. I mean, it's the first true Tony Hawk game where you're not stuck to that two-minute limit. Yeah. It sucks. And going backwards and playing, like, I'm sure, like, like you experienced, like, Tony Hawk 4, that there's humor to it. Like, what would you like about Tony Hawk 4? For one, especially the fact that there was, like, a handful of different maps it was almost like it was very, very open world, and there was a bunch of these just random, silly missions you have to do. Like I remember, 
I think, dude, they even had, like, they had, like, a normal, like, skate park map. They had a London map. They had, uh, God, there's probably... Yeah, London. Yeah. Yep. But I remember, of all the things I remember specifically from, from uh, Pro Skater 4, is there being this one mission where you had to, like, where you had to basically kickflip over the, the cops, and kickflipping over the cop would steal their hat. Oh, in, in London. Yeah. Patrol hat. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have, exactly to, you'd have to steal hard. all the patrol hats. That was actually pretty hard. That, yeah, yeah. Because they'd, they'd, like, swat you out of the air. they just beat the shit out of you. They it's do. Like, yeah. Yeah, no. It's I good have... to see some things don't change with cops. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, right. I mean, Jesus, pop uh, culture. Uh, oh, my God, pop culture. Everywhere, dude. But that game is amazing. I uh, There's some funny quotes in that, um, and... It was full circle for me when I went to San Francisco for the first time, uh, and and like after playing Tony Hawk Four and like being immersed in that level and like Kareem Campbell, like where's Kareem Campbell? I need to go get my high score, and it's like oh it's twenty twenty. Um, actually, I did go like the week before COVID happened, and uh, but I remember being down at Fisherman's Wharf and like just waiting for somebody to be like knocked over my tackle box, kid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tony Hawk Four, go check it out on emulator. Uh, or, or don't. <laughs> yeah, or if you have a, or if you have a PlayStation Two kicking around at home, uh, bust her out. Yes, avoid the legal issues. Um, <laughs> but so yeah, I mean, we're here at the Putnam Place. It's the first episode here live at the Putnam Place. Um, let's talk about some of your favorite Putnam Place moments. God, do you remember the first time you ever uh, you ever came here? Do I remember the first time? You're like your first ever, even pre-place. When we're talking den days. Den, I do remember. What was your first experience at Putnam? My first experience um, at Putnam Place was I, my friends and I, we were looking for something to do on a Halloween night. We were eighteen, uh, you know, we're, we're young men trying to make our ways in the world, and uh, we decided <laughs> to go to the Putnam Den. And <laughs> uh, you know, we're we can't buy alcohol. I'm sure we loaded up before we even walked into the, to, the, to this place. And uh, so we get the big black X's on our hands, and then it's just like music we're not interested in. <laughs> At that time, we were like super into Megadeth, Metallica, and getting into Fish. And uh, I forgot what the band was, and I'm sorry for, for even bringing this up, guys, but it just wasn't a good experience. We stayed for like a half hour and left. <laughs> Second time I came here was to see Formula 5 for the first time. This was probably 2014. Um, but now that I'm remembering it, and I didn't write on this sheet, um, I'm going to share it. But what was your first time coming here? My first time ever coming here was actually it was uh, for a Joe Mansman show. Many, 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 many moons ago, I was, uh, I was either 18 or 19, I think 18. Was he with the Midnight Revival Band? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it was the Midnight Revival Band. Or actually, and I think that same night, they also did some kind of like fucking Cosmonauts reunion. Okay. It was, dude, it was just so surreal. But if you guys have ever seen Joe Mansman before, by a bunch of you can tell I'm a huge Joe Mansman fan, go see him. That dude was so sweaty by the time this was all done and over. Like, just profuse amounts of sweat. And I've seen Joe Mansman go hard in the paint for a solid, like, almost eight years of my life. This man looked like he was about ready to... If you were to try and give him a hug, he would actually slip and slide out of the way back <laughs> to safety. After, in his words... Cause so, to the uninformed, uh, Joe Manson was the bass player for the Cosmonauts. And he always uh, would, quote-unquote, uh, beat up my bass like it owes me fucking money. So he, he always just had that, like... He has a very unmatched level of just ridiculous chaotic energy that all kind of uh, presents itself as just good stage presence, great musicianship and someone I just want to like crush a bunch of warm beers with. Oh, yeah. Dude, side note, he really is the heart. He, he's probably the best front man in glam metal today. I'm serious. Like, think about how much, like you said, he fucking puts his blood, sweat, and tears into it. And his music rocks. Oh, yeah. He dude. literally... We need to invent time machines for Joe Manson. That's all I'm going to say. Well, he would have been... He would be like a gajillionaire. 
they would have had to come up with a new range of money just to yeah. even come up with how much. They would have had to invent extra sets of zeros already in place. Past Google. Past Google. <laughs> that is a thousand and one zeros, dude. It's a lot. It's a lot of zeros. I'll tell you. Dude, I'm one. happy he didn't ever go back in time because I'm pretty sure he would have became all of our fathers. Because yeah. let's face it, Joe Manspin in 1985 would, if he didn't like literally fuck himself to death. Yeah. I think, yeah, no, he would have had like, you know how like Genghis Khan is at like one, like a half a percent of people in the world are direct descendant of Genghis Khan. I think that about 80% of the greater Glens Falls area would be uh, all children of Joe Mansman. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, Glens Falls, New York, Dude. Allentown ain't nothing. Yeah, no, <laughs> man, man's town. <laughs> man's town. But uh, my fa- I'm just going to bring up one memory that is before, this is my last memory, before I started shooting concert photography here. So my first memory was uh, a completely non-memory. I was, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to come see Twiddle here. And I've seen him a couple times. This is 2013. Oh. So, so I have this genius idea because uh, Twiddle has a song called Apples that my friend who's coming late to the show still, uh, I'm like, oh, you should go get a bag of apples at the grocery store. What? And I'll throw one to one of the band members on stage when they play the song. I didn't even know if they're going to play the song. This is a jam band we're talking about. So I'm here just trying to find some dumb. And then my friend finally shows up. And Ryan Dempsey from Twiddle, who's playing keys, uh, he sees me get the bag of apples. And he eventually asked me to throw him the apple. So it all worked out. I had, it was a great, at that time I was like, this is the greatest story ever, like ever. And then um, it really wasn't, but it was just a great, it was just, you know, when you, when you, when I didn't know about this whole thing, if we didn't work close to musicians like I am today, it was like, wow, these guys are my heroes. You know, these guys are playing rock and roll and they're like rock stars, you know? So I'm like, oh my God, losing my mind. <laughs> As I'm losing my mind. Losing your mind, losing your And team. now that I think about it, there, uh, there was this photo that I had backstage here with Twiddle and I don't remember when the photo was taken. And now that I think, after I'm telling the story, it had to be that night. Right. Basically, uh, don't uh, have fun and enjoy it while it lasts. Because you, when you get older, it, it you know it, it really is true. Like you wake up with a hangover; it's like ten times worse if you're drinking yeah, the night yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hangovers last more than one day after you hit the age of twenty-five. Yeah, and God forbid yeah. anything else. Uh, so I do. I do have one more quick fun and play story that I just thought of. So I was uh, I was always the designated driver, uh, only because of the fact that I. Was all, I've always had a beard. I could always kind of sneak into places. And uh, that did not work here. I had I had two friends. I had two J1 friends, uh, Daniel and uh, Sophia from the country of Bosnia. And they were like, there was like some kind of jazz band playing here. And they really wanted to go see some jazz. And so I'm like, yeah, man, I got you. <laughs> so by the way, like drinking and driving laws don't exist in Bosnia. So uh, I'm like, we're on the north way. We're on, we are just going down. Frankie Cavone's Northway, and these guys are just pounding Budweisers, like asking me, "Oh, do you want the one?" I'm like, "No, let's wait till I park or something." Yeah, so I went inside for just enough time to like talk to the bouncer and say, "Hey, listen, I'm just a designated driver. I'll pay cover or whatever. I just want to see this band." They're like, "Yeah, it's cool." I walk out after like maybe ten minutes of talking to them, and uh, the bouncer. Is like because it's a whole thing. Like they didn't have their they didn't bring their passports with them, but they have like their like their driver's licenses from home, and obviously there's no English on any of it. Yeah. So they're like trying to look at all this, and Sophia, God, God bless your heart, is trying to explain. I'm like, no, I I am of legal age. I I, I have cigarettes, and these whoever would they fucking loved it. They were laughing so hard. They let they let them in. Uh, it wasn't about ten minutes later that they uh, had or each ordered. Like two whiskeys, three beers. Three beers! And then they went in for their second round. Two whiskeys, three beers. A shot of whiskey! Going for a third round. They weren't allowed to get any more whiskey. And I'm just like, man, this band is really fucking awesome. I don't even remember the name of them. I do not remember anything about them. And then 
security gives me a tap on the shoulder and says, hey, your your, uh, your Russian friends are outside. And I said, fuck you, they're from Bosnia. <laughs> I walk outside and they are literally like... Really? Just dude, like, Yeah, on top of each other. Oh my God. And needless to say, uh, that is why um, designated drivers is a really important thing. Because they bring you to Cumberland Farms to get 99 cent cheese pizza after. And no one else can do that. No. Same. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. That's a good quote, too. He's from Bosnia. <laughs> it's not the same, dude. I've, I said that like four different times in his, in, in his tenure in America. They're not the fucking same. So I got a few other stories here. Dopapod number one. Dopa, Dopapod 2017 played their Halloween show here. And this is musically a, uh, one of my favorite memories from this place because that night they decided to combine Grateful Dead and Black Sabbath together for one set. So all the Grateful wow. Dead songs were played heavy. And all the all the Black Sabbath songs were performed like jam band songs. What? It was, and you can watch this online. Shout out MK Devo. He filmed the whole thing. Uh, it was amazing. Like, it's so, it was so cool. And like, I'm sitting up on the rail at Right next to Sky Hanna, just we're like losing our minds, like going insane. And now, shout, shout out Scott too, because shout uh, Sky is doing some fucking killer things these days, man. And then uh, lastly, just because, well, number one, I saw my first time I ever saw Andy Frasco was here. Yeah, that was awesome. Actually, was it the first time? No, the summit. Was it was the, the first, first time, time I saw them here, actually. Because then a week later, I would go and film them at House Blues Boston. This wow. was, yeah, that was like, so this I was... like just got out of a breakup. Andy Frasco's here. I'm seeing him full on after watching uh, all his videos online, listening to his podcast, obsessing over this guy. And still, and uh, yeah, so I, it was a great time. I took a picture with the guy. I never post pictures with a, a musician uh, that I'm with. And I just was like, I'm meeting the next greatest rock star this world knows. Oh, yeah. And he is, and uh, so yeah. And then like a week later, or two weeks later, it was like Halloween, and MK Devo asked me to go on the road with him and Pigeons playing ping pong. So it was Pigeons and Dopa uh, Pigeons and Andy Frasco, House of Blues, Boston, and then we had to go to PlayStation Theater in New York City, Times Square, yeah. and uh, just seeing like seeing how security guards who have no idea who Andy Frasco is react to him, like he was being like. Andy Frasco, not wild at all, and uh, <laughs> but to these people, are, they're like, "Oh my God, this guy!" Yeah, this, him is, out yeah, this is a lot. <laughs> I'm like, "This is great." <laughs> and the crowd's hanging him on. Dude. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Did you uh, did you watch any <laughs> excerpts from his New Year's show? Did you watch the disappearing cake trick? I did not. Really? Um, on your own accord, uh, to our oh my God, from Buffalo. From Buffalo, yes, yeah, did. I did. Yeah. Okay. That was and it. speaking of that, Oregon Fairchild in their interview with us talks about how they sat in with Andy that night when that happened. Really? Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, because they uh, premiered. Well, they'd had. Uh, I don't know if it's their song or if it's just something that they jam out. But I think they were playing that. Like it's my birthday. The cake's on fire, which they played when they were at uh, Empire Live. Never heard of it. Hope it's theirs because oh, wow. they got some good vibes to it. So That's just cool. imagine, if you will, uh, a thick woman. With two C's, thick with two C's, uh, a thick woman uh, who is uh, just in a very scantily clad uh, clothing, as Andy Frasco has two giant, like, googly eyes, like, just fucking stuck to his face. And now imagine as he blows out the candles to this giant birthday cake that uh, through the power of. Uh, just thick thighs and big ambitions, uh, the cake disappears. Where'd it go? I've had, I don't know, just very memorable nights of just bands playing here all the time, coming here at least, you know, like 20, a minimum 20 times a year, trying to go support local, coming in for the bigger acts that come here. There's really a huge variety that happens here. And there's stuff that, stuff that happens here every week, even more on the local, local scale. So just to uh, big shout out again, Putnam Place, our sponsor, not only the host of the podcast, uh, host, host location of the podcast, 
I do want to kind of just give a rundown of the calendar of events that will be happening through the month of January. Number one, every Monday night you can come and see the Family Tree Band, um, followed by Open Mic with Sly Fox. Uh, so if uh, you, you know, you're a Monday, Tuesday weekend person, you can come party here on a Monday. Or if you're looking to you know, break out that guitar that's been sitting in your guitar case for 20 years and you still remember those three chords, come over. And I even want to try to do Open Mic. We'll see. Um, I might do some stand-up here now that I uh, know that I know that. You should. Or at least give it a try. Yeah. Believe it or not, I've done stand-up like three times ever. And let's make it four, dude. Let's make it four. Make Three's it four. an odd number. We don't like that. Um, but uh, January 20th, we have Phoenix Rising, Hard Luck Souls, and Element Back. Uh, Elephant Back. And uh, that's going to be a good one. Uh, January 21st, we have Kyla Silk and Friends, uh, which is also uh, a fundraiser for the Kyle Robinson Foundation. Kyla Silk is a good friend of Mirth Films and uh, very talented. She's on the come up. Come support live local music and a good charity. Um, and then we have January 25th, uh, Boombox. I definitely want to come here for that. Boombox is an uh, electronic musician. I don't know much about, I know he's very popular. And I do like one of the songs that Spotify did suggest me to listen to. So, thumbs up to that. I personally would love to interview Boombox with more, uh, with more, I guess, knowledge on him. Or even have somebody on the podcast that weekend, that week, and have them maybe do some of the question asking, you know? Yeah. Anybody who would like to come on the podcast, please head to uh, birthdashfilms.com, send us an email, or even directly on Instagram or Facebook. We do check them. Um, and then there's going to be an opener, Ethno, uh, which is a member, uh, a side group of Thievery Corporation, another big electronic act. Um, and then we have January 27th, Dio and the London Outfit. And then finally, kids, straighten your hair, paint those nails for January 28th, oh Emo Night. It's going to be a good time. And I will say something that we talked to Sly about uh, before the podcast that, we, uh, that we're filming right now is Putnam Place is trying to diversify uh, who, who comes here. And, and I think that's great because this is an event space that uh, could be great for a lot of different things. And one of them, uh, very successful events that happen each and every single week during the summer is Latin Night. Um, that the last time I was here to film that, it was packed. It was like I, I was oh, yeah, like dude, blown that's, away. That's crazy. Man. They uh, they go hard, and those dude, those DJs are relentless. And nice guys too. Very nice guys. Yeah. The the dancing, the amount of like just technique and free form going on at the same time, being simultaneously so like like so technically well, but also so just good. I don't know. Yeah. Go, just go. Do it if you like. Uh, if you like Latin music, if you uh, if you like your salsa, anything other than mild, uh, go to Latin night. It's fucking awesome. And for those who think city folks just just don't get it, I uh, we do have line dancing night here once, <laughs> once a week, which apparently, from what Sly was telling me, is starting to catch on really well. Dude, that's and awesome. I, so think about it. This is if you're not if you're not don't associate putting a place with just jam bands. There's more going on. And, and, and to be honest, just quite frankly, about the whole music scene in general, there's so much music that we have here in this area. Like somebody from, like a Joe Mansman, who is glam metal. We got Gozer, who's a heavy metal act. We got Hilltop, who is a jam band. And we have country musicians and folk musicians like Reese Fulmer, who are crushing it. Um, there's so much. And, 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 and it's just really cool that Putnam Place is allowing all different types of genres to come in here and do their thing, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And as I get sick of jam bands day by day, uh, I'm going to be listening to more, more Morgan Wellen, Brad Pasley, right? Kenny Chesney, named after a Pokemon. God, I don't know if you said... <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if you said... I don't know if you said Brad Pasley that way to say it that way. You know, he's, he hangs out with uh, Peyton Manning. That guy? Brad, dude, Brad Paisley. State Farm is Brad there. Paisley <laughs> is one of the most talented country music guitar players of all time. He is, and he plays a Telecaster, which is rad. Dude, yeah. Him and Keith Urban both have some fucking tasty licks on that guitar. You know what? Mad props to Keith Urban, too. Great guitarist, for sure. 
Yeah. So, Brett, what are some of the things that people can expect from just things coming with the podcast? Like, what what new and exciting things would you like to be doing with this, knowing the space that we have and excuse me, the, the opportunities that we have with the musicians that come in here? I want to see how far we can throw a ball. Yeah? From one side to the other. Uh, and then in a more serious note, I would really like to see... Uh, I'd like to see if we were at a capacity where we could do something. If we could maybe shift things from... Or we wouldn't even need to. Dude, we could seriously... Like, I made the joke. Like, the, we have so much space here. We could fit probably eight people on this awesome new seating arrangement. We, uh, we could, like, take turns interviewing, like, each... Like, like eight members of Turquoise at a time. And we'd be golden. I would like to... I would like to see some kind of, uh, I don't know. There's so much more room for activities. We could do something. Exactly. And that's what makes it great is that I don't fucking know what. Maybe we bust out another board game, just not in Trivial Pursuit, because I'm still a little sore about that. Maybe we have someone just come in and out of nowhere and bust out a guitar and just yeah. throw something down acoustically. And, and with that being said, there will be one special episode a month that we cannot talk about because we want you guys to just see it happen. Um... Yeah, man, I think all of that is great. I personally would like to see Trivia come back. I would personally would like to figure out a way we can come up with a slush fund for Trivia so it's not coming out of the wedding fund. Uh, yeah, no, that's... And, uh, or maybe, or maybe, what we do is, is maybe we instead... If we, maybe we do, like, a phone thing, and maybe we can just uh, find the keys to the, the office and just snag some tickets from time to time. You know, maybe, you answer you know some what? questions, maybe you get some the tickets, you know? I think that's a kajillion uh, dollar idea. I think that Dude. even Joe Mansman couldn't afford an idea like that. Unless he'd gone back in time, then he would have. Then he probably would have, and, and he would have already the universe would have yeah. ended by now. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, everyone would have died from secondhand <laughs> smoke. <laughs> Dude. Uh, I really am, I'm just looking forward to be doing this every single week oh, yeah, again. Dude. That, number one. Uh, number two. Taking advantage of, again, the musicians that are coming into this place, having groups of musicians uh, that are just getting done loading in and want to chill for a second, chat with the, chat with the, with the team here, or, or even, you know, an hour before a show. Yeah. Come in here, it's the pregame. Yeah. This is where we usually stand anytime we're recording a show anyway, so it's nothing different. Um, Which, I mean, hell, we did something like this, the closest thing we ever did to this was the was the pre-show for Andy Frasco. And then we were going to do a post-show. And then that never happened. Andy said no. Andy said no. Without saying nothing. Yeah, without, <laughs> yeah. With just disappearing into the night sky. I think that was the last time I was actually ever hammered. Really? Serious. Wow, it's been like four days for me. Yeah, I, uh, other than that... Yeah, that's it. Because the 24-hour podcast happened before that, right? Yeah, it definitely happened before that. It was within a couple weeks of each other. Which I will say, we want to do that. It's, it's coming it's, back. It's coming back. It's coming back. I don't give a shit what I have to do, what I have to put in Frankie's black coffee, how hard he has to grind his teeth. How much We're, gum I need to chew. Dude, but, how much gum you need to yes. chew, it doesn't matter. I really want it to come back as well, it. man. We're doing it again. Especially for a good reason, um... And this time... Wild in the trees. Wild in the trees. And, dude, I gotta say, I was very impressed by Doug's setup. I thought, I was like, if, if Putnam Place fell through and we only could do it here, that's okay. Yeah. This is a sick setup. Aesthetically, it's one of my favorite looking podcasts we've ever yeah. done. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. I think there's a... I think it works well. I love this, though. Yeah. I mean, there's, as I said, we're pointing to something off camera here. That light bulb that I'm staring at right now that you guys are just going to have to use your theater of the mind to imagine is there. Uh, that is the only thing I would change about this whole, about this whole fantastic setup, is that one fucking light bulb. Yeah, which, hey, makes sense why these tables are here, because, yeah. you know... Because maybe like, people are trying to sit, but I'm tall. Yeah. And I had to stand for a second. I can't sit. I drink black coffee. <laughs> uh, so... Honestly, you know, another thing I thought of was it would be so cool to do It's a Gala again. And at, to, at and the be, trap. And, and to host it at a place like this. 
you know, like... And everyone just dresses really nice and, uh... Yeah, we'll have some biker band. Well, Sly Fox and the Hustlers play. Sly Fox and the Hustlers. No, no Big Time Kitty. We'll have Big Time Kitty open up the show. I am... Um, out, of, out of respect. Not respect. Oh. Speaking of the trap, though, are you going to, uh, are you going to, I think it's called, like, what, Friends Night or whatever? Friends Day. Friends Day. It's tomorrow. Dude, shoo. And capitals N and possibly another person. Yeah, well, so Laura Lee was not able to make the show. She's not headlining it anymore. So I wonder if they found somebody to fill in. I want to go, but um, the universe has different plans for me the next three days, and I gotta just chill at home. So. Like what? I gotta save some money. Save do you, some money. Do you want to stay at our? At our house? Come up with a plan. We have a comfortable couch. I am actually seeing my mom tomorrow too. So uh, and my fucking hair, I need a haircut now. Dude, I just dude, I just got one after. As I say, it looks nice. Thank you, thank you. Hour and a half it took. So, wow. Yeah, the uh, which I don't blame. Them. This this was a hedge trip, like yeah. level operation. But yeah, if you guys ever need a haircut, uh, check out your friend and mine, Garth Canali, uh, one half of the team at Posterity Glass. Yeah. Our preferred glass blowers, uh, for the music festival, and hopefully we'll have it again. But they do some cool glass blowing on site for Wild in the Trees Part Two skateboarding boogaloo. Yeah, we'll get there. So I mean, maybe what is what's how does your look week looking, man? I am working the next seven days. Seven days, okay. Yeah, but it has given me time, a little bit of time to play in this game, Arena of Valor, which is like League of uh, like Chinese knockoff League of Legends. And I'm like already top ten percent in the world. Nice. Yeah. So give that a download if you uh, if you kids want to have one of the more legal uh, legally ascertained versions of crack. It's really fun. Add me on there where it films Brett. Nice, dude. I gotta add you too. Dude. Fuck yeah. Download Arena of Valor. I will. Do it. Get on my level. So I mean, you've been playing. What have you been watching and listening? Uh, dude. Well, as of last night. Just this little project called Sci-Fi Soldier. Is that what? Yeah, Sci-Fi yeah, Soldier. Sci-Fi Soldier. Because Mirth Minute Super Fan Dave had told me about it uh, last night when I was hanging out with him. And the whole time I'm like, this sounds like something. And then yeah, and then he pulled the wool from my eyes. And, Holy shit! It was fish. It was great. It was great. It is good. Get more down. Get more down. Egg in a hole. So much good stuff on that. But, yeah. Watch anything or uh, football? Actually, uh, Taylor and I watched a movie the other night called Emily the Criminal. Wow, okay. It's about credit card fraud. And uh, it's actually really good. Watch that. It's got a... Uh, I'm blanking on her name right now, but she's like the kind of bitchy receptionist in Parks and Rec. Okay. But uh, she plays a, your run-of-the-mill uh, super indebted college student. And... Uh, credit card theft happens watch it it's really fun definitely have to check that out what about you man what's your media thing been like oh man I've been all over the place as always uh, music I've been listening to Danzig Iron, yes. Iron Maiden the Karate Kid soundtrack tell it uh, and then uh, House of Pain and then I've also been listening to the podcast Game Scoop from IGN I really like it it's just an all encompassing weekly podcast about all systems, all video games. It's cool. I really enjoy it. And they do video game 20 questions at the end, which I think is awesome. Um, I didn't know 20 questions was just a thing. Really? So I was like trying to explain to my friend. I was like, dude, basically, this is what they do. He's like, dude, that's a thing. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, they ask like exactly 20 questions. It's like, wow, okay. But I just thought it was a fun way that, that they end their podcast and maybe we could do something like that. I think that's where the trivia really, like, or Steezer Stale. I don't even know why I didn't think of that, dude. dude Steezer, Steezer Stale. Steezer Stale's coming back, too. Steezer They're Stale. all coming back. Everything. We're going to be so structured, it's not even funny. Next week, we're wearing uh, office casual. Yes. We're going to have polos with the Mirth Films logo on them. Yes. And uh, we are buzzing our heads. Uh, no, yeah. we're not. Uh, video. Gifted Hater, as always. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, Kai Wong, one of my favorite uh, YouTubers uh, that does camera reviews, camera videos, stuff like that. He's been in the game since like 2012. Amazing. I love Kai Wong. 
triple jump. They just came out with uh, ranking. Uh, uh, it's like a three-hour video about ranking um, each year in gaming from best to, from worst to best, which is really cool. Wow. Um, and then Square Eye Jack, I like him too. He does Tony Hawktober. So basically, <laughs> he does also like review games or like he'll get like a mystery box and like play through like the mystery box of games that his fans like send him live. I think that's, I, I just really like his stuff, but he did a, it's like a three hour video ranking every Tony Hawk's Pro Skater level from best, from worst to best. Really? It's really good, really detailed. Um, and he's just fun to watch. He's just, he's just this European kid in like his mid twenties, making fun videos, super nerdy, does not care. I, it's 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 really it's really good stuff. Um, video games wise, I beat Saints Row Three finally. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three, I beat that this week as well. Um, and then um, also the new Saints Row, I've been ripping on it for some time now, and I've took some time, got back to playing it, and I'm actually having fun with it, and I think I'm going to put out a video about why I like it now. Um, so, because I think it does get a lot of hate, and it is, you know, a subpar game versus other Saints Row games, but I really enjoy the feel of playing a Saints Row game, so that's still there, so it's a good a good game, good experience. But as far as my week is, uh, you know, really just trying to nail down this content shit and, not, and come up with a strategy so that I don't hate myself at the end of the week. Because I had burnt myself out, so I've been really good at trying to get things done ahead of time, uh, and just really try to come up with ideas and bank ideas and bank content so that we're not like stressing week to week. What are we doing, you know? And and really kind of letting you guys down and letting ourselves down because I feel my worst when I'm not doing my best for my film. So um, that's where video games again kind of saved me. I I was like. What do I do? Last night I was like, what the fuck do I do with myself? Like, I'm not, I have like kind of like quit drinking a little bit. Like, I'm still going to have a good time and party, but like, I'm like not drinking at home as much. So like, how do I, what do I do with my time? There's no, I haven't been to a concert all year. I'm like freaking out. Like, I need a patch. Well, all, I would say all year is only like 11, 13 days right now at, at the point of filming this. I waited 22 hours into the first year, last year, before I shot a concert. So that's why it's like, I don't know, the things that I, I want to just, it's good, things are coming back slowly this year for some reason, it, is what it seems. And it seems like we're not going to have a lot of concerts compared to other years. Hopefully that changes, but I just like, seems like tours, I don't know if people, I don't, I don't know, it just usually like, compared to other trends from years in the past, we've had like, uh, like at least like 10 concerts in the area and there hasn't really been that so but we do have a lot to look forward to especially Mo uh, February 24th and 25th at the Palace Theater Chuck is back fully with the band hell yeah um, can't really wait I can't wait for that um, and just I can't wait for just doing this and, and I can't wait for next week because we have no idea what we're doing next week for the podcast yet um, we'll get there. But we'll get there, and uh, I think we should maybe introduce a guest next week. Maybe have Sly on or a member on the place, and we'll see them. I like it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the Mirth Films Cheap Flights and Cornbread Podcast, where you can listen to it on Spotify, iTunes, and watch it on YouTube like you are right now. Also, don't forget mirth-films.com for all the latest live music news, uh, video game news, uh, skateboarding. Uh, photo. I mean, we're doing so much different things on there now that we don't even know our identity. I, you know, yeah. I don't know. Dude, it, I don't this know is what very it is. exciting. This is something's in the air this year, and I cannot put my finger on it. I'm banking on like some kind of a toxic chemical, but not one of those toxic chemicals that kills you right away. I guess I'm immune to it. I don't know. Possibly. But I just, I've never felt this excited about anything since starting Earth Films and I'm not bullshitting it because I'm, I'm not stressed I'm not loading shit on my plate and because when I do that that affects other people that affects my mind that's not fucking cool so let's have a good year this year guys fuck yeah and uh, thank you for watching thank you guys be good out there be safe and uh, well inside outside doesn't matter no matter where you go home is where the heart is 
smoking a cigar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were, you, were you stalling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, All right. I, was trying to, I was trying to build some suspense there. Fuck you, Nate. <laughs> good night. Good day. Good afternoon. And good luck. Good <laughs> luck.